From an enormous Nazi warship to an airplane that vanished, here are 10 vehicles lost during wartime. Number 10. Prince Eugen Originally a Nazi naval warship called a heavy cruiser, the Prince Eugen entered service in August 1940 at the start of World War II. The U.S. ultimately captured the vessel as a war prize, and in 1946, the Prince Eugen capsized after being nuked twice in atomic bomb tests at Bikini Atoll in the Marshall Islands, an archipelago in the South Pacific. The vessel, along with dozens of other ships, was bombed as part of Operation Crossroads, which was a series of tests to see what nuclear weapons would do to warships. Following the experiment, the Prince Eugen was dangerously radioactive. After several failed decontamination attempts, the U.S. military towed the ship to Kwajalein Atoll, and six months later, it sank. It's still visible today, sitting upside down in the shallow water with the propellers sitting right above the surface. Starting in 1974, experts warned that the ship would leak oil into the ocean if it was not removed within the next 30 years. In 2018, the U.S. Army, U.S. Navy, and Republic of Micronesia worked together to remove up to 173 tanks of oil from the Prince Eugen. Eighty of the tanks were found to contain oil, which the crew carefully pumped out. Removing the oil was imperative to protecting the health of the environment and the local population, who have already suffered more than enough from the ill effects of radiation resulting from nuclear tests. The Prince Eugen wreck remains in place as a popular diving site, and all of its oil tanks are sealed off to prevent leftover clingage from polluting the water. Number 9. Flying Tiger Flight 739 During the Vietnam War's early stages, the U.S. military chartered a Lockheed L-1049 Super Constellation prop liner known as a Flying Tiger Flight Line 739. In March 1962, it was scheduled to carry 93 U.S. Army Ranger Specialists and three Vietnamese soldiers from Travis Air Force Base in California to Saigon, Vietnam. After stopping to refuel in Guam, the aircraft headed toward Clark Air Base in the Philippines and vanished along the way without sending out any distress calls prompting one of the biggest sea and air searches in the history of the Pacific. The search was called off after eight days went by with no trace of the wreckage being discovered, despite a civilian reporting having witnessed what appeared to be an in-flight explosion the night the aircraft disappeared. To this day, nobody can say with certainty what happened to Flying Tiger Flight Line 739. The plane had nine and a half hours worth of fuel left and just six hours to go on its journey, so it didn't run out of fuel. The Civil Aeronautics Board concluded that the aircraft likely exploded in flight due to an unknown cause, and that's sadly about as much closer as they can bring to the families of those who perished in the ordeal. Number 8. USS Scorpion Although the Cold War never erupted into direct combat between the U.S. and the Soviet Union, both countries' militaries worked diligently to monitor the other in hopes of staying one step ahead amid ongoing tensions and fears of nuclear attack. One way the two adversaries did this was by conducting submarine surveillance and developing nuclear submarine warfare capabilities. The USS Scorpion was a 250-foot-long, nuclear-powered submarine that served in the U.S. Navy. In February 1968, the vessel set off from Norfolk, Virginia with a 99-man crew for a three-month deployment conducting Soviet naval reconnaissance in the Mediterranean. In mid-May, the Scorpion departed Naval Station Rota in Spain and headed back toward Norfolk. But it failed to arrive as scheduled, and the vessel's disappearance quickly escalated into a major military crisis. The Navy found the wreck off the Azores in October 1968. No official cause for the sinking was ever determined, but 1968 was an eventful year when it came to the disappearance of submarines. In addition to the Scorpion, three other subs vanished under mysterious circumstances, including the Israeli INS Dakar, the French Minerve, and the Soviet submarine K-129. Some believe that the Scorpion's disappearance resulted from a violent U.S.-Soviet encounter, but other theories suggest that an accidental explosion or structural damage could have been responsible for the wreck. Number 7. 50 Military Vehicles During the Gulf War in 1991, 50 U.S. military vehicles disappeared from an American army base in Saudi Arabia. The compound was supposedly secured, yet Humvees, 5-ton trucks, and other vehicles vanished almost nightly, according to senior officers who spoke with the L.A. Times. Their disappearance concerned U.S. officials about the prospect of terrorists posing as American soldiers and launching an attack. None of the vehicles were found, despite an extensive U.S. military police investigation. During the second week of the war, American commanders received intelligence reports warning of over a dozen Palestinian terrorists operating in the area and to be vigilant about suspicious-looking foreign nationals driving civilian vehicles. Some officers speculated that U.S. soldiers were stealing the vehicles to compensate for a shortage of vehicles and spare parts at other base camps that were awaiting supplies. At the time, troops were also experiencing drastic shortages of other equipment, including chemical suits and maps. 
Despite suspecting terrorists of stealing many of these things, officers claimed that security was adequate to protect the military against raids. It appears as though this perplexing mystery was never solved, or if it was, the conclusion was never publicly announced. Number 6. USS Bonhomme Richard the USS Bonhomme Richard was a Continental Navy warship that served in the American Revolution. Originally a merchant ship for the East India Trading Company, the vessel fell under the direction of Naval Commander John Paul Jones in February 1779 as a French donation to the Patriot cause. In just weeks, the Bonhomme Richard captured 16 British vessels. But its glory days were short-lived, and in September 1779, the ship caught several bullets and was lit ablaze during the Battle of Flamborough Head in the North Sea off England's northeastern coast. Jones and his crew tried for 36 hours to keep the vessel afloat, but ultimately gave up and abandoned the ship. Shipwreck enthusiasts are still trying to find the U.S. Bonhomme Richard, and a few potential matches have been spotted, but their identity has yet to be confirmed. Finding the ship is proving to be difficult due to the sheer number of wrecks in the area, as well as over a century's worth of fishing trawler nets being dragged across the sea bottom. Moreover, authorities have not moved on identifying some wrecks due to disagreements between France and the U.S. over ownership of the Bonhomme Richard. But even if the two countries can move past all the bureaucratic red tape surrounding the vessel, there's no guarantee that anyone will ever find it. Number 5. Flight 19 In December 1945, a group of five TBM Avenger torpedo bombers collectively known as Flight 19 took off from a naval air station in Fort Lauderdale, Florida for a routine training exercise. The pilots were instructed to follow a triangular flight plan that involved passing over a place called Hens and Chicken Shoals, then heading north over Grand Bahama Island and back to base. Led by experienced pilot and war veteran Lieutenant Charles C. Taylor, the flight initially went as planned. Things went awry after the crew turned north for the second leg of their trip, when Taylor became convinced that his navigation equipment was malfunctioning and that the patrol was flying in the wrong direction. Then they encountered heavy gusts and rain, further disorienting the pilots. Taylor claimed over the radio that he believed they were over the Florida Keys, which would have put them hundreds of miles off course. In hindsight, some experts believe that he got the Bahamas confused with the Keys and mistakenly believed that he and his fellow soldiers were in the Gulf of Mexico. He made the fateful decision to fly northeast, taking them further out to sea. At one point, Taylor's men convinced him to turn west, but he once again changed the flight's direction back east. Radio transmissions grew faint as the planes ran low on fuel and Taylor instructed his men to prepare to ditch. Not only did the aircrafts and their crews vanish, but so did the Navy search team that immediately scrambled to find them by boat when they stopped communicating. An exhaustive subsequent search failed to yield any of the missing men or vehicles. But it's entirely possible, likely even, that the five planes from Flight 19 are still at the bottom of the Bermuda Triangle, resting in watery graves. Number 4. USS Cyclops Built for the U.S. Navy several years before World War I, the USS Cyclops was originally designed as a bulk coal carrier called a Collier. At nearly 550 feet, it was the Navy's largest and fastest fuel ship at the time. Outfitted with 50 caliber guns, the ship carried medical staff and supplies to a French hospital during World War I. During a nine-day journey from the West Indies to Baltimore in March 1918, the manganese-laden ship and its 309 crew members vanished seemingly into thin air without even sending out an SOS. A massive search effort ensued, but the vessel remains missing to this day. No evidence of what happened to it was ever found, including no debris or oil slick. The loss of its crew is the greatest non-combat loss of lives in U.S. Navy history. Its disappearance comes with long-held rumors regarding the Bermuda Triangle, German spies, aliens, and sea monsters as possible culprits. Some people blamed the ship's captain, George W. Worley, who was allegedly a drunk who was in no suitable position to command a ship. It's also possible that the crew encountered mechanical failures or was unfamiliar with how to handle the ship while it was loaded with heavy manganese ore, a material used in steel production and that the vessel did not usually transport. To this day, the disappearance of the USS Cyclops is considered one of the most baffling military mysteries of all time. Number 3. The Tanks of Flamenco Beach A collection of rusting World War II-era tanks stand in stark contrast to the white sand beaches and stunning scenery of Puerto Rico's Culebra Island, where the U.S. Navy performed military tests and bomb practice starting in 1936. This went on for decades, especially as pilots trained for war in Vietnam, with 228 missiles hitting the island in 1969 alone. Locals opposed the military's use of the island and became increasingly outspoken about their disapproval the following year when they staged nonviolent protests to end the naval occupation. After seven months of blockades, sit-ins, and marches, the Navy finally agreed to leave Culebra Island and was completely gone by 1975. 
but it appears as though the Navy focused more on clearing out its personnel than its equipment, as evidenced by the handful of massive graffiti-covered tanks left behind which are still stationed along the shoreline today. Number 2. Lady Be Good During its first combat mission as part of the 376th Bomb Group on April 4, 1943, a U.S. Army Air Corps B-24D Liberator named Lady Be Good and its nine-man crew disappeared in the Mediterranean Sea while en route to its base in Libya after participating in a bombing raid on Naples. It was the only one of the mission's aircraft that did not return. A thorough search turned up no signs of the plane or clues about its fate, leaving officials to conclude that Lady Be Good likely went down in the sea. Then, in 1958, the plane was spotted in the Libyan desert by an oil survey exploration crew. Thanks to the arid conditions, it was well preserved, and it was evident that the aircraft had crashed. Eight of the nine crew members' remains were found strewn throughout the desert in 1960. Along with their bodies was the diary of co-pilot Robert Toner, which revealed that the eight men had survived the crash after overflying their base. They then walked 85 miles, desperate attempt to reach safety before five gave up. The remaining three survivors carried on for as long as they could, but they eventually perished. The fate of the missing ninth crew member remains a mystery to this day. Number 1. CH-46 Sea Knight While the U.S. military evacuated Saigon in April 1975, a CH-46 Sea Knight helicopter piloted by two American pilots crashed into the South China Sea. The pair were the last U.S. pilots to die in Vietnam, and neither their bodies nor their helicopter were ever recovered. In 2016, a group of retired Marines longing for closure campaigned for the American government to search for the crashed aircraft. Named the Yankee Tango 14 Recovery Project after the chopper's ID number, the group claims to know the coordinates of the fatal disaster, which happened in waters between 65 and 100 feet, 20 to 30.5 meters deep, roughly 17 miles from the coastal city of Vung Tau. Surprisingly, not everyone with a personal connection to the tragedy supported the cause. Speaking with the San Diego Tribune in 2016, Steve Nustel, whose brother Captain William Nustel went down in the crash, said that the money it would cost to recover the wreck would be better spent caring for disabled veterans, but that his family would not object if the military decided it was appropriate to salvage the ruins and the human remains. Let them rest in peace, he said. The government also seemed hesitant to pursue the recovery, with one official stating that underwater investigations are difficult at best due to the tendency for storms and currents to move them around on the ocean floor. It's easy to think that anyone who's lost a loved one to war would want that person brought home, but situations like this prove that it's not always the case, and that perhaps it's sometimes best to leave things and people in their original resting place. That's all for today. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you again next time for another amazing video right here on American Eye.